Today on Uncommon the Good MTG, we're playing an Azorius Detective Tribal deck to see if Detective Tribal really pins out the new, new meta. Trust me, it does. If that sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned to find out more. Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I'm your host, and while I'm a doctor, I'm not a medical doctor, so stop sending me pictures of your infected junk. Doctor, you can suck it! Yes, thank you! Film before live studio audience. Thank you so much! You can suck it! Word to your mama. So I'm broadcasting to you today from my secret underground headquarters, and I'm bringing to you a deck that uh, I made based upon a viewer recommendation. All right, so Antonio Virgolito4126 came to me with tears in his eyes and said, Hey, love your videos. Could you craft something up with detectives? White, blue, maybe? I would appreciate it a lot. Well, I got to tell you, Antonio Virgolito, I I thought, man, detectives, I don't think it's going to happen. I, every time I've seen those things or tried to play a detective deck, it sucked. It sucked. But based upon your desires, I went ahead and tried to play a few different detective decks and ended up making this one. Uh, it kind of merges together two or three, and then I tweaked it on the sides even more. Trying to get uh, some of the things I thought were more important. What's that thing that's more important? Creature removal. That's what I'm looking for there. All right, so this is the deck is strung together. I hope you like it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the cards that are in this deck. We're going to talk a little bit about how this deck should work. And then we're going to take it out and crush some hopes and dreams. What do we got? We've got, um, well, we got a lot of detectives. We've got Mystery Spy, who's a detective. He's got Flying and you could put him out as a uh, disguised dude who is a 2-2 creature with Ward 2. And then you can pop him back up, at which point if you do damage to somebody, you get to investigate. Yeah, whatever, you got you a flying 1-1. One, one. That's what's great about it, right? For one. Uh, let's get back to this later. Case of the Pilfered Proof. Whenever a detective enters the battlefield under your control, and whenever a detective is turned up face up, so like a mystery spy, you put a popo counter on it. So it helps to... Bump your dudes up, right? Pump, pump, pump. This is pump. And then after you solve it, which is three more detectives, uh, if you control three more detectives, if one or more tokens will be created under your control, those tokens, plus a clue token are also created. So this gets out a bunch of clues, which allows you to draw cards. Get lost, destroy target creature, enchantment, planeswalker. It's a lot of things you can destroy with it. So it's, it's, its utility is its value. And its controller creates two map tokens. I mean, those are great, but not that great. So you can welcome to them, opponent. Perimeter Enforcer. Flying lifelink. Another cheap flying 1-1 one, one guy. Uh, whenever a detective enters the battlefield and you control, you turn or is turned face up. This guy gets a plus one, plus one till the turn, which mix it with lifelink. You're doing pretty decent, right? Uh, skip past this. Skip past this. Wojak Investigator. Flying Vigilant. At the beginning, you have to keep... Uh, if your opponent has more cards in their hand than you do, you get to investigate, which is where you get a clue card. So then potentially more card draw if you got the mana for it. But you got a flying vigilant 2-4, H-Ain't, you can't shake a stick at. Uh, this guy is a 2-2 flying vigilant, and you draw two cards, and then unless you discard an instant or sorcery or a creature with flying, then you have to discard two cards. Whatever, it helps you draw more cards. You can usually throw away something that will help you and keep two of the other things. Uh, let's see, or at least one of the other things. Private Eye is a lord, so all your detectives get plus one, plus one. And then whenever you draw a second card on your turn, and we got lots of ability to draw second cards, target detective cannot be blocked this turn. So basically, you can make one of your guys unblockable. So we got uh, the ability to get guys out. We have the guys' ability to pump them up a little bit. And we have the ability to get a bunch of clues, which then helps to make them unblockable. There we go. 
What else we got? We got Burden of Proof, which I found this was to be a fantastic detective card. You got Flash, so therefore it's kind of a trick. You can get it in. You can give your detective plus two, plus two. Um, otherwise, you can flash it onto one of their guys, which gives it a base power and toughness of 1-1 one, one and can't block detectives. So it can make a dude not be able to block and it becomes a little Wussysaurus Rex. That is fantastic. It's basically creature removal to a certain degree, except for it just has to deal with power and toughness, right? If it was Shouldred, Shouldred would still do that whole thing with the uh, drawing cards, you know, but whatever. It's better than nothing, right? Uh, let's see. We've got Borrowed Time, which pins things down, non-land permanence. We got Get Lost, which gets rid of things. We already talked about that one. Uh, we got March of Swirling Mist, which phases things out temporarily. You can use that offensively or defensively. This is one of my favorite cards from Kamigawa. Is there anything I missed in here? Doesn't look like it. We've got Inganjo, which does four damage to target attacking blocking. We got Atawara, which goes ahead and bounces stuff. And a bunch of dual lands. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to get, we're going to start curving out our detectives. They'll start to pump each other up, get a bunch of uh, clues out, help to draw more cards use our tricks to try to pin things down and uh, pump our dudes up so that we're continually grinding down our opponent until they are dead. Uh, March of Swirling Mist, you should try to save it as much as you can until something becomes dire because uh, using at the end to, to clean the board, to give yourself open skies, to bring all your dudes in to kill them is such a choice move. All right, so that's it. But before we go out and do our damage, let's say our prayers and talk about what is best in life. Dear Black King Toxroll, who dwells within the black, the dark chambers of my heart, please hear my prayers and grant your blessings as we attempt to crush our enemies, see them driven before us, and to hear the lamentation of the women. Ah, wow, we we're playing against no idea, no idea. Keep. Oh, what are we going after here? Private Eye? Don't want to give it to him? Just nip it. Let's just wait. He usually uses that to put other bitter, bitter things out. All right. We'll give, Private Eye will come in and give this guy more pump, which would be great. What are we getting rid of here? Let's get rid of guy with flying. Well, looks like we know he needs to be going by. No blocks. And all in. I was thinking we do proud eye. I just don't want to keep taking three points to the, to the chops every turn. He knows I don't want to lose my only guy. All right, there we go. We got a couple of three threes. We have three pieces of creature removal. Not bad. I picked Seder. Interesting. I don't know what he's doing. They both have reach. Yep, reach, reach. We'll just pop this last one. All right, go ahead and block. There you go. And we win. There we go. We held him down. Baby cakes, we held him down. Spit in his mouth. All 
Our opinion of kids on a fetz. On a fetz. All right. Hmm. All right. We can play detective for that one for blue. They touch all my cards over and over again, like a card toucher. Looks like when it comes to blue, I only have one blue card that's not a detective, so we'll be fine. Burn the proof. All right, one, two, and these are a bunch of threes. All right, what's Lazy Butt here doing? Investigate, we sacrifice a clue you may have. All right, who cares, that's fine. Yeah, that, that uh, legendary dude there looks like he should be really badass. All right, don't make me kill him. I will. I'll do it right now. All right, one point for me. 18-18. All right, we got the three man out that we need. He's got three cards. He's got a lot of uh, clues, though. <sighs> Did you get never unlink? Is that the deal? When I uh, tap, it doesn't untap during, so I have to tap it, untap it myself is the deal. That's never going to happen. All right, Onafets, you're going kind of slow, man. You just pinning my dudes. Oh, you're taking my steal, my guy. Well, that is just space rude. Maybe I should just got rid of those lands. All right, so our little pal there has got Death Touch. It is a 1-1. One, one. All right. Yeah, you tried, but you found a land. It's so disappointing. It's one of those situations where it's like, oh, it's a stupid land. You found another one? All right, so burner proof, we could shut something down. What does this thing do anyway? Draw a card, uh, yeah, let's just do that. Uh, it's still gonna retain its abilities, that's not great. Let's just pump that dude up. Let's pump him up again.
He's got vigilance. Yes, he does. Who's got vigilance? He does. I'm surprised you're not uh, cluing it up like crazy, baby. There you go. Jin Kataxis. Which one is this? All right, I got six. I can play them both. But well, that perimeter enforcement would have been really, really cool. Oh, I slowly slipped it right here. There you go. So we get two through. That's really good. This guy a detective? Nope. He's a shapeshifter. You have any detectives? Uh, not, you're not blocking otherwise. I, mean, I guess you could shapeshift, right? Ah, uh, you're down to three. I got two flyers next turn. All right, I'm expecting well, he's going to try to draw next turn. This is where the potty pants is going to happen. He has a solution or he doesn't. And he needs to know it now. I mean, he's going to draw more cards. Why not? I'm sure touching everybody's cards is what's going to make it actually change the way the outcome is. How this is going to play out. You got a guy. He's got a lifelink. Something tells me you don't have... You don't have to draw more cards, man. Go ahead and go for another clue. Clue it up, baby. Exploring is just going to find you a land where you can see what's on the top of your card. It's not going to help out too much. I guess I'll let you know whether or not you want to clue up. At this point, you just kind of need to go for it. It was kind of a waste of mana. That yeah, was a land. Congratulations. All right, well, there you go. You picked up a whole nother land. All right, you better hope that whatever you get only costs two mana and it takes blue. Nope, you're out of mana now. You can't put down any more. You're about to give up. There we go. That was desperation right there. Victory! Play against Karn Mark. Karn Mark.
Let's leave the owl. I like Hootie. Oh, it's me, huh? That's what we're waiting on? Don't make me talk. I get kind of confused. He's playing a detective deck. Interesting. Nothing. Just keep those babies from happening. A private eye. He's watching you. He's watching your every move. Let's pin her down. Another novice. I'm not here. You can't do anything about it. Another lightning helix. Well, that's good. I know what to watch out for. We just get rid of it. So he's got nothing, huh? All right, they're helping each other out. Unfortunately, I cannot keep them alive at this point. I don't have the mana for it. Hopefully their increased butt size will keep them alive. All right, flying in does two tippy toe, tippy toe. All right, at this point, we can do some damage. Let's do it. Let's see what he's going to do. Is he going to jump in front? He's going to try to chump. You just let it all happen. Cool. All right, we still have plenty of mana to keep our guys alive. At least the guys I care about. Hopefully I don't have to. If I just let them come through and do damage to me, I'll be cool. Because pinning all those dudes down and going for a full attack, that's what I want to see. So I can pin down four at this point. All right, man. Yeah, come on down. Just leave yourself with four or less dudes. Swarm, 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 swarm me. Do it. Come on. Waste yourself. Thank you. That's exactly what I want to see. Um... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's just block past the blockers. You can't do anything, right? Ooh. 
One, two. That's it. And we win. Man, I love that card. I love that card so much. March is really missed. Now we are playing against Tan. Apparently the color. Two mana. I'm not a fan of this, actually. I mean, I couldn't play these. Nah, let's keep it. Let's see what we can do. All right, so I can get that guy BP, but he can still get shot with a lightning strike. That's what I need. I can pull this thing out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and shoot it. That's fine. All right, there you go, Burn. 19. Look out! It's a goat! Alright, let's see. I'm gonna still hold off. No, let's just do it. He knows enough of what's going on here. Let's put out the Wojak Investigator, who's got a nice BP butt. Now in for one. I can't I can't block your scapegoat. I can't take out the etching. Okay, so he's going to he's going to jump on whoever, so we'll say no blocks, that's fine. Here comes the uh monstrous rage. Are you planning on shooting something? All right, I'm down to 8. Uh, I'm not going to block this. Just keep going in. And get rid of the goat on this next turn. Hopefully, can't boost it up to eight. Fine. That's it, I'm dead. All right, I got taken out by a mono red deck, as one would expect. We are playing against Rogo555. Five, five, five. Uh, keep. All right, all done. Got playing, he's playing colorless. Good, love colorless. All right, vigilance. That'll let us do a lot. What are you gonna do with blue there? You try to ninja me?
Oop, I've been tapped. Now make sure you get that extra card that you have to throw away. All right, uh, let's throw out another detective. And I'm gonna go with this private eye. All right, here we go. Because we have the ability to depend. All right, let's let it go. There's nothing I can do about it. All right, let's pop this guy out. That's perfectly fine. And we win. And we win. Well, that was interesting. Victory! All right, up and against the Stoic King. All hail the Stoic King. All right, I'm just gonna put this dude out. He's flying, he's a 1-1. One, one. He can get, we're gonna get to more to three, we can make him into a 2-2. Two, two. And in we go. All right, if he tries to attack, it means that he has the ability to pump up to kill off the private eye. We should just ignore him. We'll use the March of Swirly Mist to pin him down at the wrong time. Weird. Uh, don't want to get rid of my other guy. No, decline. That's totally fine. One, two, we're fine. Uh, who we want to send through? Red Rover, Red Rover. Let's send this guy right over. And treasure up. All right, so if we need to, we can protect a guy with one guy with March of Swirling Mist. That's what he was trying to do. All right, let's uh, steam core. Let's see what else we can pull here. And we win. There you go, Mono Red. Suck it. Suck it. All right, I did not think it was going to happen. And that being uh, putting together a detective tribal deck that was actually going to be halfway decent. But, uh, let me just check here. 56%, man. Yeah, it was slightly decent. It actually did an okay job. Um, yeah, I was actually proud with this deck after we were done tinkering around with it for a little bit. So there you go. It wasn't, you know, top tier. We're not taking, we're not storming the ranks with it, but it did an okay job. And it, it had some, some, some beef to it. I like that. It was quite, it was quite good altogether when it was all done. All right, let's see. Who was the MVP? Who was the most valuable player? Uh, you know, it's funny. I ended up taking out the big detectives out of here because we just never made it up that high. It seemed like getting um, our mana together was rough. So we have nothing that's more than three mana. 
That is interesting about this particular deck. But the thing about it is that this deck is a lot about making, it's a lot of lords going on. You know, your glorious anthem type cards, making your stuff stronger. And then everything starts beefing up along the way because of the synergy between the various cards. Um, so to me, it kind of felt like my MVP was probably the private eye, you know, because he was, he's a three, three, you know, for, he only costs three put out. He was a three, three other detectives get plus one, plus one. And he allowed to make your stuff, uh, basically unblockable, which is pretty decent. So I think all the value was there. I mean, Wojak Investigator was great at giving you more uh, clue cards. This guy was good at drawing you more cards. I mean, they had their their powers. They were good. The thing is that they didn't pump everybody else up. Private Investigator, who I was looking forward to. But then again, if you didn't have other creatures out, then he wasn't all that great. But he was the guy I was looking forward to the most. Burden of Proof was an interesting value card just because of the way that you can either pump up one of your detectives or use it to completely make something else pitiful. Like there was a card game I was playing, right? Someone got out Galta, 12-12 Trample, right? Didn't have haste. I was looking for so forward, so incredibly forward to just pinning down Galta. But all of the other guys just swore me and died. Uh, that didn't, so it was going to be funny, but yeah, all together, the joke didn't land in the end. Yeah, all together, it was a tight deck. It did a good job and uh, I, I liked it. And the MVP was Private Eye. All right, there you go. Private Eye, you are today's MVP. Number two, was this deck fun? Um, yeah, the reason why is because we had guys that came out early enough. Between Mistway Spy coming out for one, I mean, he felt pitiful. He felt incredibly, incredibly pitiful. Uh, but I like the fact that we had a flyer. I like the fact that he could get pumped by the other guys. And so, therefore, he could become a two or a three usually. And that's you can't sneeze at that. And at least you could be attacking or blocking or chumping or whatever you need to do early on. It helped trigger things. Altogether, it was great that way. Um, so, you know, Primer Enforcer, he was cheap. And, he, you know, getting him pumped up, getting that lifelink in, that really counted for a lot. All right. So, let's see. Was it fun? It was a it was a funnish deck. It was worth playing. It had a little bit of tricks in there. Uh, I think this deck really came together when I put in the, uh, the exiling capability that came from Borrowed Time and March of Swirling Mist. And burden of proof and get lost gave us that control we needed because we weren't really, you know, we're not really bombing. We're not coming with a huge bomb and attacking people. Um, but we were coming in, pinning some stuff down and continuing to buff ourselves up to threes, fours, fives, sometimes even stronger than that if we got enough burden of proof out. And uh, usually people couldn't hold it together. So between the card draw and everything, yeah, it, it worked out pretty well. It was a fun deck that way. It was interesting. I say that's the where this deck really came together is that it was interesting. I It was a detective tribal deck. And we haven't played that before. Really haven't seen it come together well. I've seen people try to play it a little bit. Hasn't really happened. This deck, I thought, had a relatively decent situation occur where it did an okay job as a deck and could consistently win. You know, it's a 50% deck rather than a than a three, you know, within a sixty-six percent deck, but um, still, you know, pl you know, winning every other game is pretty good. It's worth playing. All right, so let's add this up. Was it competitive? Just, just barely. I mean, you could compete with it. It wasn't. You're not going to rank, but it was casual competitive. Was it fun? Yeah, it was okay. It was a pretty decent deck that way. It wasn't the most fun. I'm more of a aggro player. I look forward for haste. This deck did not have haste. It just kind of, you had to put your guys out, wait, then attack. You know, the tricks are what made it more fun to play. And uh, by tricks, I mean March of Swirling Mist, Get Lost, Burden of Proof, Borrowed Time. Yeah, I mean, those are your tricks that allowed you to kind of clear the board. Maybe you're attacking in, you can make things, you know, they block with a bunch of dudes to slaughter something. You phase out just one of them so you can slaughter all of their guys and keep your guy alive even just one of their little tiny guys left. I mean, that's that's kind of fun. But interesting is where this deck really shone. It was, a, it was a cool detective tribal deck. It was a paragon of detectiveness. So I'd say, yeah, there you go. It was a full-on full on deck. Um, What am I going to rate that then? I'm going to give this deck an A-. 
It just, it was a good deck. It was in the category of decks worth playing, possibly play it again, but I kind of felt like it didn't have a big enough bomb. You weren't a great threat, and it kind of felt like you were kind of almost Platinum Mythic in that you were just trying to sneak enough damage in to win, and it worked more times than not, so good for you. But it just didn't have quite the punch I'm looking for in a great deck. All right, so if you decide to play with this deck, I hope that you find it just as interesting as I did. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the secret underground headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. In the words of my people, screw you guys, I'm going home. Bye.